Let us first review what we have talked about before about cell potential for different types of electrochemical cell, galvanic cells and electrolytic cells. Galvanic cells, or GC, this is an example that we have shown before. We have zinc metal, copper metal, each inserted into solution containing zinc chloride, copper into the solution containing copper chloride. And between them, there may be a membrane that separates the cation but allows the anion, chlorine ion, to penetrate through, but separate the cation from mixing. Okay, and uh, earlier we said, based on the standard electrode potential series, the zinc electrode is more negative compared with copper electrode. Zinc electrode is more negative compared with copper electrode, which means if we connect the zinc electrode and the copper electrode together through an external circuit with finite resistance, REXT, external resistance, a finite resistance, then the electron would flow from the more negative side, which is the zinc, into the copper side, and on the zinc electrode, the zinc metal gives out the electron to form zinc 2 plus ion, dissolve into the solution, and on the other side, the copper 2 plus ion combined with the electron released by the zinc electron and to form copper metal and deposit onto the copper. And we said for the zinc side in galvanic cell, it going through oxidation, which is anodic reaction or anodic half cell reaction. The copper side is going through reduction and it's going through cathodic uh, or reduction half cell reaction. Okay, and uh, we said before the equilibrium cell potential. Equilibrium cell potential would be the total current times the resistance coming from two parts. One is external resistance, the other one is internal resistance. This would be the relationship between the equilibrium cell potential, which is a potential when external resistance goes towards infinity and when there's no internal leak and when there's only one electrode reaction on each of the two electrodes. Under that condition, the equilibrium cell potential, we would have a definite number, okay? And that number, if if there's current flowing would be related to current by the total circuit resistance, which include two parts. One is external resistance, this one, and one would be the internal resistance, which is what I will happen in between the two electrodes through through the electrolyte, through the membrane. Okay? And then if we manipulate this equation a little bit, we would have the cell potential, which is the potential that you are going to measure between the two electrodes, between the negative zinc electrode and the positive copper electrode. If you are going to put a voltmeter between these, you are going to measure a cell potential, E cell, which would be the same as current times external resistance. Okay? current times external resistance and the current times ex external resistance from the top equation would be equilibrium cell potential minus current times the total internal resistance. Okay, so this equation gives us the cell potential when there's current I passing through this galvanic cell and EEQ would be the so-called equilibrium cell potential. Okay, this is the case for galvanic cell, which is the case when no external power supply is provided. And uh, when you connect one zinc electrode and the other copper electrode through a finite external circuit, finite resistance, this is what you're gonna get. The voltage you're gonna measure between the zinc 
and the copper. Okay. Then we said for a different scenario which we called electrolytic cell, EC electrolytic cell, we still look at the same system. Zinc metal, copper metal inserted into zinc chloride solution for zinc and copper chloride solution for copper. And of course, we may still have a ionic permeable membrane that separates the cation from mixing, while allow chlorine and anion to migrate through. Okay, but in this case, instead of a external resistance in galvanic cell, we have a large external power supply. Large external power supply. And actually, you apply this external power supply so that the negative side is connected to zinc, and the positive side of that external power supply is connected to copper. And if this external power supply is large enough, if this external power supply has large enough voltage to counteract the equilibrium cell potential between zinc and copper naturally, then you can reverse, see from here to here, you can reverse the direction for the electron flow. And in this case, it will be called so-called electrolytic cell or EC. And in this case, if you are going to measure the cell potential, which is in this case just simply the applied voltage between these two would be the equilibrium cell potential for this electrochemical cell when the external is open and when there's no leakage and when that simplified uh, single electrode direction on each of the electrodes, then this total cell potential in this case would be equal to the applied potential would be equilibrium potential cell potential plus current but I put it as absolute value of current times internal cell resistance. Internal cell resistance. This would give us the cell potential under electrolytic cell condition. Okay, if that's current flowing, but in the opposite direction, electron flow into the zinc, which means we are trying to reduce zinc 2 plus ion into zinc metal, while at the same time stripping electron away from copper to dissolve, form copper 2 plus, and stripping electron away. So this will be called electrolytic cell. So for galvanic cell, as we mentioned, we are spending chemical energy and we can drive external circuit such as a light bulb. But for electrolytic cell, we are spending electrical energy and then we can deposit, we can store part of that electrical energy and store chemical energy and zinc metal and copper 2 plus uh, iron. Okay, so this is what we have said before, how to link cell potential and current, cell potential and current. And in this case, for electrolytic cell, for simplicity, I'm using absolute value here.